Welcome to Sport Jam. Everybody get up, it's time for sports now. We've got a real show going down. Welcome to the Sports Jam. Oh, it's your chance, talking rant. It's the Sports Jam, all right. Hey man, you can't get any better than that. Welcome to the Sports Jam. I am Joe Rourke. I am Mike Zajac. And I'm Sam Speedo. There we go. The date is June 22nd. Sec- first? No. Second? There's a 20th, 20th? today. 20th? Debbie's Thursday? screwing us off. She's... Yeah, Debbie's throwing us off over here in the corner, looking at the wrong dates on the board. So the Hawks won yesterday in overtime, 6-5 to five on a Brent Seabrook goal. Not my favorite player. How about you? He's not mine either, but I honestly he is clutch. I honestly cannot stand Brent Seabrook, but I got to give him some credit for yesterday. He's clutch. This is what his second game winning. Yeah, he also won a goal. game seven against Detroit. Yep. So I go to Blue eighty two for two games during this playoffs. Both of them ended in a Brent nice. Seabrook goal. Hey, it's a win. It's all that matters. I find it unacceptable that you do dislike a Hawks player. You should never dislike any Hawks player. Okay. Take it back. You know what? I don't like uh, Michael Roseball. Is that a problem? Yes, he's our team. Ah, uh, I don't know. Love them all. I don't know about that. All right, so anyway, the Hawks scored on a power play goal. How about that? Yay, clapping, Sam. This is your cue to clap. Sam. There you go. go. I don't really care for hockey, so. All right, well, thanks for that. So anyway, one for four on the power play. Uh, they had a four on three, and the penalty is the offsetting penalty is just ended. And they scored with a minute left on the second power play on a five on four in the third period. Thank God they finally did yeah, something. They need that. They, they haven't scored a power play goal all series. That was uh, that was their four, uh, third or fourth power play of the game, which brought their streak over twenty. Their right. scoreless streak over twenty on the power plays. So the team uh, the team stats are pretty even again, but this time Boston only won faceoffs by one. 39 face-off wins to 38 for the Hawks. That was the key to the game, I believe. Right. Face-offs, they needed the win. They got off to a hot start, too. That was key. Shots on goal, Chicago 47, Boston 33. Yeah, they outshot them by a lot. And that's all they got to do, just keep throwing pucks at the net. Eventually, they're going to go in. Yep, yeah. I mean, I mean, you saw with the last play of the game, Kane shot at the net, went to the other side of the, the rink, and uh, Bickle threw it at the net, goes out to Seabrook, boom. Yeah, Bickle threw it into a defenseman skate, bounced right out to Seabrook, teed it up, sent it home. Hawks win. Yep. Crawford, though, after having a great series and a pretty good playoffs overall, really. He hasn't had too many bad games, but this one was pretty horrible. Yeah, five goals, all went glove side. All glove. You think they were going uh, glove side after, like, the second or third? I'm sure they were. I think so. I mean, it was just he was missing them right at his glove, and he was missing them. I think uh, Eddie O on NBC said it best. They're aiming for his glove. That's what they were going yeah. for. After they got, what, two, three goals, they knew his glove side was weak, and they just hammered it. Yeah, these were perimeter shots. These yeah. weren't. A lot of these weren't like, oh, we're two feet away from the net, throw a glove side, he missed it. Like, these were ones at his glove from 30, 40 feet away, and he was just whiffing. Now, there was that one goal that someone threw off the glass behind the net Bounced down on top of the net over Crawford's shoulder, and then a Boston player just flicked it right in. Yeah, There's no, just nothing you could do about nothing that. Nothing you could do about that. I mean, Bergeron made a great play, put it top shelf. That's where Grandma keeps the uh, cookies. Did you know that? <laughs> That's where Grandma keeps the cookies, Sam. Top shelf. Is it? Yes, it is. Wow. All and, right. So, oh, go sorry. ahead. All right, the uh, the Kane Taze Bickle line. Kane and Taze reunited once again, combined for a plus seven on the night with two goals and three assists. That's working. Yeah, that is. I I thought that was a key to their them winning Kane and Taves together. Right. It showed in the King series. I mean, Kane got his hat trick with Taves on that same line. Got another goal in that series. I don't know why Coach Q switched it up before this series, but, it, I mean, they're back together. They played great, both of them. They just play off each other. 
that he should keep this line together at the top. Yeah, clearly that works. Uh, I hope he sticks with it for Saturday's game. That seems like the most logical thing to do. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're not spreading your talent deep across all the lines, but their top three lines are pretty good. They are. So you might as well stack one of them. And obviously it's paying off because they had, like I said, two goals and three assists on that line. Now, Nick Letty, someone who I think has grown a lot this season. and is I mean, he's only 21, 21 or 22, and he's done really well. He's taken a lot of strides. But last night he only played two minutes and 37 seconds. Wow. You know, Letty's a guy who brings a puck up down the ice. He, the, the other defensemen, I think you said last show, they just dump it in. Right. Letty, he's a guy who brings it all the way to the net, and I think that gets your offense started. Yeah, he carries it in. Like nobody else on defense, he carries the puck into the zone with speed. He's our second fastest guy after Stahlberg, and he's on defense, and he gets it up at the Hawks' blue line, just busts it through the middle, and then makes plays happen, and he only played 2 minutes, 37 seconds, the least amount of ice time he's seen in his whole career. He when he was a rookie, he was playing more than that. This year he's been averaging about 20, 22 minutes a game or more, and 2 minutes, 37 seconds. It was pretty shocking. So after the game, one of the reporters asked, and he's not injured either, I right. said, what happened to Letty? Is, is he okay? Is there a reason why you only played him for 2 and a half minutes? And Coach Q said, Nick is fine. And that was it. It's got to be a coach's decision then. I mean, I don't think he's hurt, obviously, but that had to be Coach Q's decision to take him out of the game. Yeah, that's all he said was that Nick is fine. So he's kind of keeping his cards close to his chest there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's just trying to mess with with Boston's coach and and think, oh, you know, what's going on here? Or if there's something wrong with Letty, or maybe Letty's in the doghouse like Stahlberg was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope not. I think Letty's a great player, and I think – he should be out there all the time with those guys. I mean, he's one of the best defensemen we got Yeah, on the team outside Keith and Seabrook. Yeah, like I was saying, I wanted him quarterbacking the power play because I think he's better at it than, than Keith is, and he moves the puck around better. And So it looks like we got a caller on the line. We got, we got a call. Dave. We got David on the line. Hey, Dave. Hey, guys. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, you? Was, it, was it me watching that? And I just about had a heart attack for half the night. But um, – a lot of lazy, weak passing. It wasn't crisp stick to stick. It's, it was, um, you know. I, and I know they're both teams are tired, you know. But let me tell you, when when, when I when I see you know somebody come out of the net, you know, and uh, it was just to me it was just a lot of weak passing, and it really it centered the puck, and it uh, I believe some of the weak passing and skaters falling down, and I know the humidity was sixty seven percent, and the ice was soft. But it's soft for both of them. But so, what do you guys think? I mean, did that? Was, am I the only one that saw a lot of weak passing yesterday? Um. Yeah. I mean, both games at Boston, the passing has been. Uh, like I said, I think it's because of the ice. The the teams have been saying the ice is a little soft there, and you see a lot of weird bounces over people's sticks, or they'll even when there's no one near them, they'll lose the puck. So I think uh-huh. I think maybe the reason that the passes may have been weaker. Maybe they are playing that on purpose. Maybe they weren't going to throw hard passes because they didn't want it to hit a rut in the ice and jump over, mm-hmm. you know. So maybe that was part of the game plan. But all I know is when Kane had the puck, he was playing with much more confidence than he has in a while. He was making all his fancy moves. He was making some nice passes. Saad had a, a very nice pass to set up Hans Zeus for the first goal. Right. I wonder if ice from, from stadium to stadium is – you know, when they, when they used to talk about the Celtics, and, you know, they knew on that parquet floor where the weak board was, where the soft board was. Right. I wonder if it's the same with ice. You know where the soft spot is. You know where the hard spot is. I wonder if it's the same. Yeah, generally, you know, right where the Zamboni uh, comes in and out is generally has some rough patches over there because just because, you know, the doors open the widest there and because the Zamboni's crushing the ice as it goes over the that little lip. And then the whole thing about at the UC when uh, there was a concert there a couple weeks ago, they were saying the spot where the concert, where the stage was, was messing up. So, yeah, I think that's definitely possible. And I don't know if that's the reason for the passing, but I think it, it could be. Yeah. All right. Well, great show, guys. Uh, keep it up. Thanks. All, All right. Thanks. Right. Thanks a lot. All right. So the next game is Saturday at 7 at the UC, back at home. Here's some Chelsea's dagger, hopefully a lot. Could have heard it six times, but. Could have. 
at the bar they play it. So at Blue 82, we heard it, so that was good. That's good. I know Bridges uh, and uh, Griffith, they play it too as well. They do. They, they do a, a good, good job. Uh, it really gets the crowd going when you can everyone oh, yeah. can hear. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so uh, let's take a break real quick. When we come back, we will talk some NBA Finals with Sam, the intern's intern. Talk some more uh, Cub Sox in the epic battle for the worst team in the city. And we'll talk about some of the the signings that they've signed or have not signed yet from the draft back a few weeks ago. You are listening to the Sports Jam on WJOB AM 1230. This is Doug Johnson on guitar. He's come to believe everything should be easy. That's because earlier this week, Doug discovered something that changed his life. The Toro Personal Pace Walk Power Mower that effortlessly moved with him, automatically adjusting to his walking speed. With no lessons required. Toro, count on it. This and all Toro products are available at Gus Bach Ace Hardware in their three locations. Lansing, Dyer, and Munster. Serving the region since 1896. Hartsfield Village, a continuing care retirement community located in Munster, offers a wealth of services and amenities to the residents to allow them to truly experience what we mean when we say living well, living wise. Hartsfield Village offers an outstanding retirement value in Northwest Indiana and Chicago Southland. Living at Hartsfield Village assures comfort and security with a lifestyle that can promote greater independence while preserving one's financial assets. The Hartsfield Village Wellness Program promotes staying actively involved mentally, physically, and socially with others with scheduled recreational and social activities. Sponsored by Community Hospital, Hartsfield Village provides its independent residents with priority access to assisted living, memory support, and nursing care if ever needed. Arrange a private tour by calling 219-934-0750. Phil Youngy, 16 years at Corellis Roofing. Bruce Bailey, 28 years at Corellis Roofing. Joe Learman, 20 years at Corellis Roofing. This is Bob Pabst, 23 years at Corellis Roofing. George Corellis, 52 years at Corellis Roofing. We at Corellis Roofing are not only striving to be your roofer of choice, but also your employer of choice. Visit us on the web at www.corellisroofing.com. Welcome back to the Sports Jam. I am Joe. In front of me is Mike. In the corner where we keep him is Sam, the intern. The intern's oh. intern. Step boy. Step boy. All right. All right, Sam. Let's talk some uh, NBA Finals preview. The game is tonight, right? Correct. And uh, I have some uh, some solid predictions for you. Oh, yeah? Uh, my predictions are basically fact. So if you want to run, run right to Vegas, you know, put some bets down. I'll get on that. All right. Well, in, in my opinion, the Spurs will take Game 7. Uh, Tony Parker will have 20 points and 10 assists. LeBron will have a monster game, as he usually does. Uh, Manu Ginobili will step up big and play with a huge role in the win. My prediction for the score? Spurs 106, Heat 98. MVP Tony Parker as LeBron flops his way to a, to a losing oh. championship series. So you're picking a high-scoring Game 7? I am. Isn't, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't Game 7s, aren't they usually low-scoring because everyone is tightening so hard down on defense? I don't know. I think it's going to be high-scoring. I'm feeling it. Okay. Sam, do you know the best two words on sports? Uh, Kobe Bryant. Game 7. Tonight. Do you know when the last time a road team won Game 7? Uh, I don't know. Tell us. 35 years ago, the Washington no Bullets, yes, defeated the Seattle Supersonics. You remember that team? I think that's Wes Unsell. Was that, that was before you were born, Supersonics, I would say right? a substantial. Before any of us were born. <laughs> but, right. uh, again, the game is tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central on ABC. All right. Thanks Looking for forward the... to a LeBron loss. <laughs> you think the fans are going to think they're going to stay? San uh, well, according to Chris Bosch, uh, he doesn't want fair weather fans to be at the game in the first place. So, uh, no, I think they will stay. I think the Heat fans get the message that they're never out. So, righty. Thanks a lot. Let's uh, 
Let's talk some Cubs Sox real quick. So the Cubs and Sox both lost yesterday. They uh, neither one of them gained position on the number one draft pick for next year. The uh, the Cubs lost four to one to the Cardinals. Jake Westbrook, the the enigma that is Jake Westbrook, seven innings pitched, only allowed two hits, zero earned run, lowered his ERA to a buck seventy six. Wow. Yeah. Jake Westbrook, a buck seventy six ERA, end of June. It's pretty this good. This guy was awful when he was his with whole the Indians. Career. Yeah. His whole career, yeah, he was, yeah, with the when Indians, he like you good? said. This year, is, he, this he's year. been good. He had a, I mean, he's had a couple decent years sprinkled in, but never one point seven. Whatever no, and you know, know what? His other numbers actually aren't that great. He's walking more than he's striking out, which is obviously a bad Edwin sign. Like, right. Yeah. Speaking of Edwin Jackson, he goes to three and nine on the year. He always has one bad inning. Do you guys notice that? It's always one bad inning. Where he walks uh, about a baker's oh, he, dozen. Well, he walks, yeah, dozen, or gives up a lot of hits. But sixth inning last night gave up three runs. And before that, it was a one-to-one game. Close game. He blows it. Uh, good news tonight, though. Scott Feldman on the mound, 6-5 and five with a 3.05 ERA. Bad news, Lance Lynn is on the mound Ooh. for the Cardinals. He's 9-1 and one with a 3.56 ERA. But as a Cubs fan, aren't you rooting for them to lose so you can get better draft picks? You know as long as they have a better record than last year, I will be happy because I'm not expecting absolutely nothing. From but them. don't you want a higher draft pick? Yeah, but still, improve every year. That's how I see it. See, we have different philosophies here. Mike wants to see his... His Cubs do the best they can every year. I just want to see them improve year after year. I want to see my Sox do the best they can to start the year, and if they don't start well, then I say tank it. I agree with that philosophy. Burn it down. For sure. So that's, yeah, what do you know? You're a Yankees fan. When was yeah, the last I know, time, I don't know like, anything was about the last time they had a bad season? Yeah. Uh, the one year they didn't make the playoffs. But Oh, I, I oh you they, didn't make the playoffs? I, I how did you I survive? Like, actually. How, how, how do, do you, you think survive? I live my life? Every day, <laughs> year after year, being a yeah, Cubs fan. Been... One year they made the playoffs, they had the best record, and then they got swept by the Diamondbacks. And the Dodgers the next year. Cubs haven't oh, yeah, won a playoff that. game in ten years. Man, you're Sox company. haven't won one in five years. I mean. Yeah, baseball's we're... pretty bad right now in Chicago, I'd say. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad. And it's not look. I mean, we, there's a couple stars sprinkled in, but. On I like the, too oh, bad. on the Sox, yeah, and there's nothing on the Cubs uh... right now. Uh, yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. All right, so the Sox lost uh, seven to four to the Twins. Uh, Kevin Correa outdueled Chris Sale, and outdueled is not the right word because Chris Sale went five innings, gave up four runs. Pat Renwick Pat is showing Renwick us in studio showing with us a cup, apparently. couple of Florida State Seminoles. Seminoles. I don't know what he's trying to say here. Seminoles rule. Seminoles rule. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for that <laughs> quick update. Uh, I thought so anyway, it's rule, but. <laughs> Chris Sale, five innings, gave up four earned runs, two walks, five Ks. Alex Rios, I blame for that bad start, that bad line from Chris Sale because he misplayed a ball in the outfield where he ran in on it and the ball landed over his head. The very next batter, Brian Dozier, hits a three-run home run. That was all with two outs. That should have been a routine out out of the inning with zero runs given up. Instead, that doesn't go down as an error because he didn't technically touch the ball. He wasn't expected to make a play. For whatever reason, any outfielder cannot make a play unless he touches it, is what the, they rule it generally. So, yeah, he ended up giving up three run home run right after that, and he was not happy. He also got hit by a line drive from one of the hitters. It hit him, I think, in the midsection and then in the face. In the face? That's that's what I heard. I did wow. not see it because I was obviously watching the Hawks game. This wasn't a Tampa Bay. Uh, this was this was not an Alex Cobb. Alex incident. Cobb. And not a Brandon McCarthy one either. This was just yeah. this was just a grazing blow. So the draft was uh, about three weeks ago. The Sox are right, they go forty rounds deep, all right, which is a right. lot, a lot of players. The Yankees I think had forty two picks because they had a couple extra in the first round. I think, you know they cheat too because they're the Yankees. <laughs> well, well we honestly, so. honestly, the only reason they had those picks is because they were able to buy players that eventually left, and then they get reimbursed with picks when those players leave like Rafael Soriano right so kind of yeah they kind of buy draft picks in a way because they buy players let them go someone else signs them they steal a pick I mean I'll accept that they've they've always they've always had a lot of draft picks early like in the first or second round compensate uh compensate rounds 
So anyway, the Sox have signed all but seven. They've signed 33 of their 40 picks. The highest or lowest pick they have yet to sign, however you want to look at it, is their 13th round first baseman, Danny Hayes. They've signed 1 through 12, and they've signed a lot of guys in between. And like the last four rounds, 37 through 40, they haven't signed. They've done a great job signing all their players as fast as they can. Yep. Getting them into Bristol, getting them into Great Falls, letting them start their careers. That's key. Real early. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Get them into the system. Don't let them sit around on their couch for a month and then sign. I mean, you see NFL draft. They sign guys real late or sign guys sit out, you know, on a holdout, and they come to uh, training camp, and they're just not ready to play. Well, the only difference there is that baseball season, the draft is in the middle of the year. So they can sign and immediately go play pro right. ball. In the NFL, you can't sign a week later and automatically right. be playing games. So that's a difference. The Cubs have 27 unsigned draft picks right now, including their first-round pick, number two overall, Chris Bryant. What is going on? They're going to sign him, realistically. He doesn't want to play for the Cubs, that's why. All right. He, wa- he wants to make that money. Whether he doesn't want to play for the Cubs, he wants to sign that contract because he's going to. Why would you not want to go to the city of Chicago and play? Because you won't win? It's Okay, uh, okay, good point. But still, it's the city of Chicago. You can go to New York and win. Oh my gosh! Here we go. All right, here we go. All right, we're skipping this that. Guy. So the Yankees have uh, 21 unsigned draft picks, including first-round pick center fielder Aaron Judge. The guy's like what, six eight? What's six, going seven? on over there, Sammy boy? He might play the, in the NBA, actually. Who doesn't want to really? play for New York? Who uh, doesn't want to play for New York? Apparently, why doesn't he sign? Elo and Clark and do. <laughs> they signed. They did. Clark and the guy who said he doesn't like the Yankees, that high school kid, that 17-year-old. Don't trust 17-year-olds. No, absolutely not. We, we got one to our Sam right. Sam Holder? 17. 17. Oh, okay. That sounds about right. Yeah. I'm about the same. Uh, you know, I can throw upper 90s. Sure you can. Don't trust them on the road either. Sure you can. You know? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we, We've been told not to mention that, but <laughs> let's just say we bring our own airbags when we drive in this car. <laughs> All right, so let's take a break real quick. Uh, we'll come back and talk some headlines with Sam. Talk a little Manny Machado. All coming up on the Sports Jam. You are listening to AM 1230 WJOB in the Hammond, Indiana. Stop by Luby's for an amazing breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Located in the Menards Plaza in Hammond, Luby's Pancake House is the perfect spot for the whole family. Luby's Pancake House is open from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. daily and is now offering steaks, chops, ribs, chicken, and fish. Delicious cream pies will have you coming back for more. Seniors receive a 25% discount from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. Go to Luby's at the corner of 165th and Columbia in Hammond and tell them Jed sent you. At Quick Scripts, our experienced pharmacist is available for one-on-one consultations every day. Prescriptions filled while you wait in 20 minutes or less. Or if you're in a hurry, the doctor can call the pharmacy and our professional courteous driver will deliver it right to your house for free. We accept all major insurance plans and discount cards. We have our own $4 generics program and we'll work to get the best price on medications for those who do not have insurance. Stop by Quick Scripts Pharmacy at 3330 Ridge Road in the heart of downtown Lansing. Toll free 888-535-3040. At Smith Chevrolet, we aren't satisfied until you find the Chevy vehicle you're searching for. Serving Hammond as well as the surrounding Chicagoland area, we offer a full inventory of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs at competitive, no-haggle pricing. Also available is the full service repair and body shop. So if you're looking for that new or used Chevy vehicle, stop by at 6405 Indianapolis Boulevard in Hammond, call 219-845-4000, or go to smithchevyusa.com. Holy diver right there. We got some traffic news. Uh-oh. 169th Street and Columbia closed due to a water main break, so avoid that intersection. Courtesy of Debbie Wargo. Thanks, thanks Debbie. Thank you, Debbie, for that. Yeah, uplifting so news. About avoid that intersection if you can. About the water main break. And we are going to go. By the way, that's 169th and Columbia, just to remind everyone. Yes. We're going to go to Samuel Step Boy for headlines. Well, here's the headlines for today. Uh, Jay-Z now is a licensed agent for the NBA and MLB. He has signed big names Geno Smith, quarterback for the Jets, Robinson Cano, second baseman for the Yankees, my boy, Skylar Diggins, uh, new draft pick 
for the Tulsa Shock. Do you have anything to say about that? Um, I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. I think you're going to get a lot of players who happen to enjoy his music and hip hop being like, yeah, that'd be cool. Let's sign with Jay Z. But I don't know as far as if he's a good agent or not. I think it's an agent team though. Probably. So I, would I think say. so. I assume he's going to bring in some guys who obviously know what they're doing. But yeah, I guess he just got his license to actually represent the players himself. Which they say before that happens, he needs to sell off his less than one percent of Nets ownership. That Interesting he has. that he owns less than one percent. And here before I came, I thought he was like maybe majority owner. Right. I didn't know. Well, yeah, that's what I that when you asked me when you said why would he own less than one percent, I said because you know him as Nets part owner. Yeah, that's all he wants. Yeah, I mean he could he could own a little bit in a in a team in each sport, and he could say, oh, I own a team in every sport. But it could be less than one percent. Correct. And he could technically say he owns at least part of a team. All right. So what else you got for us? Well, I got the, the strikeout rate in Major League Baseball is outstanding. Right now, strikeouts are on pace for thirty-six thousand seven hundred and forty-two for the season, which is ridiculous. You have April fifteen point two nine Ks per game, in May fourteen point nine eight, and in June fifteen point oh one. What do you have to say about that? Well, that's. To be clear, that's hitter strikeouts that are going yeah. up, not individual pitching strikeouts because pitchers are being babied more. They're pitching less innings. Uh, guys aren't going seven, eight innings every time. They're going more like six or seven innings. You're not seeing guys like Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling and Pedro used to do where they'd be striking out 300 to 350 guys. Now 250 is the benchmark for a lot of strikeouts. Yeah. And I don't even think that's happened since Tim Lentz come in like 2009, I think, struck out 251. And the Astros are on pace. They have 673 strikeouts so far. Far They're on pace to shatter the strikeout record for a team for the season. So. Yeah, I, I remember when 200 strikeouts for a hitter was a lot, when Mark Reynolds was setting records like six, seven, five, six years ago, when he got like, 211, 214, and it was crazy. Now Adam Dunn's getting, like, high 220s, like, like 230. Head, so. And you're seeing a lot more guys approach the 180 to 200 mark for hitters, which is a lot. Yeah. So do you think that speaks for uh, better pitching in the league or just worse hitting? Well, it's you're more likely to strike out if you're facing a new pitcher every at-bat rather than if you're seeing the same pitcher for three or four at-bats because you eventually – you pick up on how he's throwing that day, all his pitches, everything like that. So if you're seeing a new pitcher every time, it's harder to get hits. Because you actually see in the minor leagues a lot, not a lot, but more no-hitters in the minor leagues than the majors because those guys are only going three or four innings, then a reliever for two innings, then another reliever for two innings. So it's just that, harder to hit if you're seeing a new guy. Do you think a better method for a coach to put in multiple pitchers for a game? I mean, that's the way it's worked so far. Back in the day, they used to go – Guys used to go 9, 10 Until innings. your arm falls off. Yeah, they used to pitch 400 innings a season, then 300, then 250. Even as far as like 10 years ago, they were throwing 250. Now they're throwing – now if you get to 200, that's considered a really, like, durable season. So. Yeah. And uh, the big story of the day, with an O.J. Simpson-like chase, Aaron Hernandez is – not ruled out as a suspect in the homicide case. Uh, Mike knows more about that case. Go to yes, Mike. Aaron Hernandez, a 23-year-old, plays for the New England Patriots. He's a uh, tight end over there. Uh, uh, law officials, I guess, checked his house Tuesday, I believe, carried out a box. I'm guessing there's a mystery some, box. A mystery box. <laughs> what do you think's in that box? Someone's uh, head. Probably. Someone's head. I'm gonna go with a murder weapon, a maybe, or something. Maybe a horse head. Maybe. Maybe, maybe he went but, hunting. Uh, I guess media went to his house this morning to talk to him. He fled the scene, and then the Fox affiliate of uh, Boston followed him with a chopper. Yeah. Like they did O.J. Simpson. Like O.J. Simpson style, which was hilarious. I was watching it on ESPN.com earlier. And you see him running into Gillette Stadium. He was there. He left uh, sometime after noon. That's all I have for that. And there's uh, updates on, like, ESPN, like, Aaron Hernandez drives down the street. Like, right. <laughs> like, no one cares about that. Yeah, Deadspin was saying that it's been confirmed that he was with the guy who died the night that he died at a bar. Right. Like, there were four guys in this car. They left wherever, and they came back with three. 
That, I mean, that's the story I've heard. Yeah, that's a problem. That's, what, I think it's a plot for the Hangover yeah, 4. It is. <laughs> what, I wonder, what I wonder is, what, <laughs> what do they mean by calling him? I'm still wondering about this. They're calling him his associate. I don't know. What are they? What is he implying by calling him his associate? That they don't know what he does. Yeah. Like, and the, uh, the they don't want to say friend, is he probably. Some shady character that he's uh, involved with. I don't know. They don't want to say friend because if this guy was in some shady stuff, they don't want to say, oh, then, you know, this associates him. Well, the victim's name is Odin Lloyd. He's 27, a semi-pro football player, well, former now. He was found <sighs> oh. uh, shot in the back of the head Monday near Hernandez's home outside North Attleboro, Massachusetts. Hmm. So that is all we have for that. like a lot of, a lot of trouble for Aaron Hernandez. Hopefully he can... Work that out. Belichick probably not liking the, the off the field attention nope. with him and Tebow. Yeah, I guess so. they could probably just check Belichick's cameras, right? I'm sure he's got them set up Ooh, all over I'm New sure England. He's got them all over. Fired. Shots fired. That is our word here, our <laughs> phrase here. You got anything else for us over there, Samuel? Well, we check ESPN here. Not so far. No? Do you guys have anything? All right. No, that's fine. No, just... we are good. All right. All right. So let's talk a little. Manny Machado right now. If you don't know who Manny Machado is, you need to do some Googling because this kid is pretty amazing. You always hear, who are the two names you always hear in baseball? It's the two greatest young players right Puig. now. Puig. Okay. Puig. But I mean, recently you've I've been hearing a lot of Chris Davis. Well, okay. All right. You guys kind of. <laughs> uh, Edwin All right, you, did, you did quite play into my hand here. I was going for Bryce Harper and Mike Trout. Those are the two names you hear as the, the future superstars. Oh, two young guys. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Weeks pretty two... young. All right, Sam. Quiet. Turn the mic off. <laughs> so those are the two guys you think of for the superstars of the league coming up. Yes, Puig right. as in the past 15 games, which is always played. But anyway, Manny Machado does not get a lot of recognition, but he is having an amazing season. He has, at this time, 73 games into the year, 33 doubles. That's wow. a great season. That's a oh, great wow. amount of doubles for a season. And he's got that right now. He's on pace for 73 doubles, which would set the all-time record and beat it by quite a lot. What is the all-time record? Do we know? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Mike. The all-time record is 67 doubles set by Earl Webb in 1931. <laughs> yeah. Before we were born. Uh, I believe uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Looking at my watch, yeah, I believe. I, know, well, that I we think that's both before my parents were born too. I would probably I, assume I think. so. Okay, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure <laughs> before they were born. All right. So there have been more 60 plus home run seasons. There have been eight of those, than 60 plus double seasons. Only six. So when you, because when you hear 73 doubles, you may say, "All right, that sounds like a lot," but. You know, you, it's hard to really put that in context because people don't think of home runs all the time, right. or I mean doubles all the time in a season. But, yeah, more 60-plus home run seasons than 60-plus double seasons. When was the last time somebody hit over 60 doubles a season? Um, that was in 1936. Wow. So all six of those seasons of 60-plus happened before 1937. And nobody in the past right. 20, 40 years has even come close to 60? Uh, false. False. Todd Helton in 2000 or 2002 hit 59. Okay. But yeah, that's that's been it. Most guys, most guys hit around 40, and that's real good. Right. Yeah. I'd and the reason the reason there were more doubles back in the day was because the parks were a lot bigger. You had polo grounds that was like 460 yep. feet to center, and so instead of home runs, they were getting doubles because the outfielders can only play so deep. So they would just hit it over their heads, get doubles, or the outfielders would have to play so deep. Because the walls are so far back that they'd bloop it in front and get a double. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Mike Trout this season. I don't know if anyone knows about the stat war. Wins above replacements. I'm a big fan of it. It's a cumulative stat of offense, defense, base running abilities. Park factors are all factored in. Mike Trout has a 4.1 war, which is real good. Bryce Harper only a 1.8 war. And Manny Machado, 4.0. So he's right there with Mike Trout for war this season, which puts them fourth and fifth most of all the hitters in baseball this year. Miguel Cabrera obviously leads the pack because he's a freak. Right. Yeah, he's been crushing it this year. He's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, yeah Miggy, is, uh, Miggy is quite the hitter. So, yeah, Manny Machado, make sure you get to know that name. He's going to be Manny. probably in the All-Star game, honestly. Manny Machado of the? Baltimore Orioles. Hopefully they trade him out of the East. So Third they have to baseman. With him. And also yeah, of the Baltimore Orioles is my boy. 
on my fantasy team, Chris Davis, who hit his 25th and 26th season home run of the season yeah. yesterday. He's coming out of his shell. Yep, I'd say so. So I think that's going to do it with our show for today. Hope you all enjoyed it. We had a pretty good time. Thanks for Dave calling in. Shout out to another Dave calling in. Thanks for uh, thanks to Sam Step Boy. Step Boy. For help us out. And obviously I am Joe Rourke and that is Mike Zajac. You can check out this broadcast on YouTube in just a couple hours. We have it up on youtube.com slash jed.tv. That's two D's and two T's. We had all our shows on there if you want to check it out. And that's going to do it. Peace.